Hello, class. Now, we're going to start session four. This is, remember, we're still on session nine. Excuse me. This is part four. Now, I've changed my outfit here. I've got my little 1960s thin tie on, and I'm all dressed up in my suit because we're going to talk about John Fitzgerald Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. Kennedy is our 35th president. He's a Democrat. I get a lot of Kennedy papers. I always tell my students, uh, you know, I think my my female students really like Kennedy, and I think if Kennedy were alive, that would really make him happy because Kennedy loved women, and that was something about John F. Kennedy. So let's talk a little bit about our 35th president, John Kennedy. Now, Kennedy is going to be born to wealth. Uh, Kennedy, remember, guys, will also be, he'll be assassinated, so he'll have a very short presidency. Uh, now, one of the things I want to mention really quick before we get into Kennedy is in the same era of time, it will be Martin Luther King. Remember, Martin Luther King will come up. He will have peaceful protests. Martin Luther King will be that civil rights leader that makes America look in the mirror at ourselves and say, look, uh, segregation isn't right. Uh, whites, kids that said, you know, it's not right. Why don't we go to school? Like, what's the deal there? And it will be under his administration. Uh, well, under, excuse me, it will be under Martin Luther King's era that will happen. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about John F. Kennedy. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, guys. And I wish, you know, <clears throat> I wish I had about a 20-minute lecture because when I give this lecture in person, I talk a lot about Kennedy. I get a lot of Kennedy papers. Uh, and there's misconceptions about John F. Kennedy. We'll talk a little bit about it. First of all, guys, John F. Kennedy is our one president that is truly a World War II hero. John F. Kennedy, guys, first of all, he had a lot of health issues, had a bad back, uh, could not, would not, could not even get into the United States Army during the Second War. Had to go to the Navy. They put him on what's called a PT-09 boat. These were small boats, well, small for the Navy, and they were kind of hit and run boats. Went out, uh, worked in the Pacific. He is in a, he is a PT-109 commander. His boat gets hit and sunk. I want y'all to kind of picture this. You're out there in the middle of the ocean. It's at night. Uh, your boat is sinking, and John F. Kennedy will take uh, every member of his crew. He will save them. He will take a put them put a life preserver on them, a life vest, puts the other end in his teeth, and he swims. He was a college swimmer, by the way. Uh, Kennedy will swim all the way to this island. He'll put the guy there. He'll go back and he'll do the same. He will save every member of his crew. He is truly a World War II hero. Now, the thing about Kennedy, he never used that in any of his campaign speeches. He always felt what he did in the war, he did for his country, and he did not do that to get some type of campaign speech or become the president. Uh, now, when Kennedy is in, there's a couple of things that will happen under his administration. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about them. The first is the Cuban, uh, well, excuse me, the Bay of Pigs. Uh, we should be familiar with that because the Bay of Pigs was one of the uh, exercises that we did, depending on which class you're in. But what the Bay of Pigs, and I'm trying to say, kind of hurry this up, guys. The Bay of Pigs is, we had figured out that under the Castro's administration in Cuba, the United States being we, that the Soviets had set up a base. So we wanted to overthrow Cuba. Cuba's only 90 miles off the coast of Florida. So we had set up what was called, we called the Bay of Pigs. What we did was the United States was going to back some rebels, send them in there. They were going to overthrow the government. Then we could go in. Now, the interesting thing about the Cuban invasion, guys, is it was actually planned by Dwight D. Eisenhower. Remember the guy that did not want war? Eisenhower put all this together. He never executed it. When John Kennedy came in office, his administrators told him, look, we have this plan. It was drafted by Eisenhower. Kennedy just assumed, look, if Eisenhower drafted it, this is the same guy that did Normandy. This will be a shoe-in. We can do it. Kennedy will, uh, from there, launch this invasion. It is a terrible, 
terrible failure. Uh, and several things will happen. One of the things the Soviets will look at Kennedy and they will say this young, inexperienced American president, they will test him. That will be the Cuban Missile Crisis. Guys, this is probably Kennedy's greatest test. Uh, the Russians have all these nuclear weapons that they're transporting to Cuba. And what it is, is they've got the devices, the actual rockets and the launch systems are at Cuba, 90 miles away from the U.S. Kennedy basically tells the Soviets, if you continue on, we will, we will basically attack you. Kennedy is telling the Soviets, if you persist with this, we will launch a total war against you. The Russians push Kennedy all the way to the edge. Uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis, guys, is a big part of Kennedy's administration. <clears throat> he does come out okay with this. Uh, the Russians will back away. So when you look at the Kennedy administration, you're looking at, number one, the Bay of Pigs, which was a failure. You also look at the Cuban Missile Crisis, which is a little bit better. Uh, remember, each president dealt with the Russians differently. Kennedy kind of got pushed around by Russia because of the Cuban uh, because of the Bay of Pigs and the fact that he came out as being a very inexperienced president. Now the interesting thing about Kennedy guys, we talked about Martin Luther King, the Civil Rights Movement, we talked about all that. Kennedy will put in a lot of things in place. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, Kennedy will make the famous speech, ask not what uh, your country would do for you, ask what you would do for your country. That's his inaugurational speech. I encourage every one of y'all to get on YouTube and listen to it. It is considered one of the greatest inaugura inaugurational speeches ever. It's right there with Lincoln's second and FDR's first. Uh, now, the Peace Corps, he will launch the, the Peace Corps. And the last thing with Kennedy that he does, that he's noted for, is he will challenge us to send a man to the moon. And we will do that. He will, it will be the NASA space program that will put together and Kennedy will challenge the United States to put somebody on the moon and we'll do it. Uh, interesting thing, guys, NASA. NASA was built by when at the end of World War II, we went over there to Germany. Germany had great rocket technology. They were 20 years advanced of anything we had. We got all the rocket scientists we could get out of Germany at the end of the war. These guys will then build NASA. So yes, the NASA space program was built by German scientists that had worked at, for the German army in World War II. I didn't say they were Nazis. I just said they were scientists that developed the German rocket systems during the Second War. Unfortunately, Kennedy will be assassinated. Uh, guys, probably one of the greatest paper titles I ever read was a student wrote, Kennedy a portrait never finished. Basically what the student said was that Kennedy had all these plans. Kennedy did have civil rights plans. Kennedy had the space program, the Peace Corps. He had started all this stuff, but yet a thousand days in his administration, John F. Kennedy is assassinated. And we will really never know what John F. Kennedy could or could not have done. Uh, there's several books out there you can read. Some people think that Kennedy uh, would have not done so great because uh, he did not have the political background to get a lot of the civil rights stuff done. Some people think he, he does. Uh, JFK is always a good one to write about. Uh, I, you know, I like JFK. I think he was a good guy. Uh, he was a notorious womanizer, guys. JFK was the one that had the uh, affair with Marilyn Monroe. And we talk about moralists and presidents. Remember, guys, FDR died at his girlfriend's house in Warm Springs, Georgia. John F. Kennedy had several women that he was having affairs with. Uh, some of them would come to the White House and they'd have affairs. John F. Kennedy was a notorious womanizer. Uh, they dated Marilyn Monroe. Uh, does that make him a bad president? That's kind of up to you. But like I said, JFK, there you go. I hope you like my JFK outfit here today. I've got my little thin tie on, got my little jacket on, in honor of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. So guys, this will conclude this lecture. We come back, we're going to talk about the predecessor, Lyndon Baines Johnson, one of the most interesting guys that's been in office.
Bye, guys. We'll see you then. Bye.